Hey everyone, we have another free comic book day review. This one is of Ignition. Ooh. So one of the first thing I noticed when I was holding this comic at free comic book day is that it feels like it's printed on higher quality paper. So that's interesting. It, it basically means that they've invested into free comic book day. And by the size of the pages, you would think that this would be a pretty thick book, that it's probably just like the first issue of Ignition that they're giving out for free in order to sell you on the series. And that's what I was thinking. But no, it's not, it's not the first issue. It's the first 11 pages of the first issue. And how they were able to keep it so thick regardless is that they literally spent the re the last 11 pages just explaining everyone's powers and then selling you other comics. <laughs> so I guess they saved... Oh my goodness, this is actually more than just 11 more pages. This is... Oh yeah, that's a lot of pages that they saved for advertisements! Oh well, I guess it's slightly better to have your advertisements at the end of the comic rather than, like, in the middle while you're trying to read. But, uh, sometimes ads are in, like, decent places. I'd like to see an ad for life insurance right next to, like, a panel where a guy is just getting clobbered. Just, like, getting a knife through the chest and then to the left, life insurance. Make sure your loved ones are taken care of after you die. <laughs> but yeah, more comedically placed ads in comics I would be down for. The art is actually pretty dang good, I would say, in this uh, comic. It's a little bit frustrating is you got this big page, everyone's photos and, like, paragraphs upon paragraphs of how apparently very, very happy they are to be on H1. And I don't see the artist credited anywhere. Where's, where's the, where's the artist's last name? It's, oh, it's gone. 45 years of evolution. I don't care. I want to, what's, where's the artist? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, Phil. Briones. I totally said that right. Colors is pretty good too. But uh, yeah, apparently they saved it for the back of the comic. Thanks. So before I start talking about this comic, uh, I actually didn't remember what this was until I actually started reading it and I was like, oh, it's that comic. So this started um, as an idea of what would happen if the survivors of a shooting gained superpowers afterwards. Or at least that's how it started. And then after a while, it, it evolved to whatever this is. I don't, I'm not really quite sure. <laughs> Get it? Evolved? They kind of explain this throughout the first page here. The idea is when uh, humans are put through a large amount of stress, they unlock superhuman abilities within themselves, which, you know, isn't entirely um, new. <laughs> as far as superheroes with traumatic pasts, I'm pretty sure all, yeah, all of them, all superheroes have tra traumatic pasts. So they have this first page here, which really gets its point across, but for some reason they have another page at the back of this, which just kind of drags it out. You know, if I was if I was an editor, I would just completely chuck the second page because it really doesn't need to be there. It can be like shown as an example of when a writer isn't really confident in their writing and they feel like they have to keep on explaining something because they're worried they're worried that the the reader won't understand it, but nah, I, I read the first page and I was like, okay, this is where we're going with this. I'll say I thought this particular like square here is at a is at kind of an odd place i honestly i didn't when i was first reading through this i didn't even notice that it was there because i look at the frog and then my eyes immediately just go down but basically it's giving you examples of how animals can under stress 
can um, unlock this ability that allows them to fight back. In order to protect their colony, they literally explode, slaying their enemies as well as themselves. You know, I'm kind of getting sick of the word literally being in almost every sentence of everything. Alright, from now on, I'm banning the word literally. It can never be said again. Find a new word. I mean, really, it is just, it's, it, it is actually just filler. I, I don't like reading filler words. I don't like reading filler in general. I usually just skip over filler and try to cope with the experience of having to have seen it. So we smash cut to this scene where somebody's bleeding out who got shot, and it's this guy who was trying to rob a store. For some reason, he has a kid in his arms. I guess after he shot this guy, he immediately picked up a kid or something. I I mean, I guess it's also possible he's just been holding the kid the whole time, but it, it, it doesn't seem that smart. I mean... I don't know. You don't have to pick up a kid to hold them hostage. Anyway, so she's there, and she is all suited up, just completely ready to beat him up whenever she wants. Um, I guess she doesn't have a gun, but she has a bulletproof vest and everything, right? Wait, is that like pepper spray in her belt? Well, this guy over here was the one who tried to stop him. She, she wasn't doing anything, but now she's helping him not bleed out. And this guy has a kid. Oh, it's a, it's a kind of interesting, you know, scenario, I, I guess. But, um, it's kind of broken as soon as we get to the next page. The main reason I say that is because she's, like, having this conversation with him, and she's just like, hey, you got the money, just walk away, drop the kid, and just, just leave. Simple as that. You didn't kill him, he's still alive, we can save him, just get out of here. And what he does, and I'm not kidding, he actually drops the gun and takes the kid. Uh, I don't know why. I guess the idea is that a, a gun is small, compatible, and can shoot people who are after him. But a kid is heavy and will weigh you down and probably will kick and scream the entire time giving away your location. So clearly he chose to take the kid away. Oh, it's also funny because even the woman points out that why why do you why do you drop the gun? It has his fingerprints on him. And where was he gonna put this kid? <laughs> where is he taking the kid? He drops the gun and takes the kid. Oh, what's that show called? True TV's World's Dumbest Criminals. You see, I don't even know how I can root for the heroes. When the, when the criminals are, are dumb like this. If I was the hero, then I, I wouldn't entirely be very proud of catching this guy. It's like, oh, how'd you catch that guy? It was, that was amazing. Well, actually, he was an idiot. So then we immediately smash cut to these two people over here. And I actually, yeah, that's, that's them right there. I didn't realize entirely what they're, powers were. I, I I did have to read the back where they just explain everyone's powers <laughs> and backstories because it's not like they can do that in the story or something crazy like that. No, but the these two people, I, I thought they were kind of cool. They both like kind of have magnetic-esque powers. It, it kind of reminds me of like a twin pair. They always have the pair of twins in superhero stories and the twins' powers, like, kind of complement each other. So he can attract things, and she can push things away. And when they're too far apart from each other, they'll magnetize back together. So that that does seem something like a, an ability that would be put on two superhero twins. <laughs> but I thought it was kind of funny, kind of cute. Or, well, not, not funny. They actually... I don't think they have any jokes in this comic. Unless you count, like, the joke being that super dumb criminal who took the kid instead of the gun. I do think that they could have jokes with these two, though. I think it would be extra funny if you have them be, like, super different, right? Or, or maybe they're even, like, different politically. Maybe, like, one's Republican, one's Democrat, and then 
people come up to them and they're like, oh man, I don't know how the heck you two stay together. The political climate is terrible right now. Uh, how do you guys do it? And then they like look at each other and then look back at him and they're like, but you know what they say, opposites attract. Get it? Get it? Okay, that's not gonna happen, but it was an interesting idea. It took me a while to realize that he had actually hit this guy. I guess he's a lefty because he swings from this side. Um, there's just not as much of a big impact. Maybe if this was contrasted a little bit more. Also, both sides of the bat are blurred. Only, I would imagine that only one side of the bat needs to be blurred, showing like which direction he was actually swinging, right? Um, but that's just my little critique of that. So then we get to the good stuff, right? Right. As far as things that would scare new readers away from this series, boom, here it is. Anyway, this guy is like a radio show host and he's supposed to, from what I understand, be a parody on Alex Jones. From what I understand. It could be some other guy, I don't know. He literally talks like this. Whole thing was a false flag operation, man. Biggest, best produced one yet. This isn't about protecting our children. This is the loony left coming after our guns and constitutional rights. So his whole thing is, he has this conspiracy, from what I understand, he has this conspiracy theory that this shooting that happened didn't actually happen, or something, something like that. It was some kind of operation, and all the, all the kids are actors, and he gets a call, and it's from the kids, who I'm assuming were from the shooting, the survivors from the shooting, and... From what I understand, they just blew up his house. <laughs> and they look super menacing. <laughs> I mean, like, I can, I can to an extent understand them being really upset that there's this conspiracy theorist out there cons saying that, oh man, the shooting isn't real, man. But not upset enough to destroy the guy's house. I legitimately, I, I don't understand that. I think, yeah. I think they came off as the villains, and, and maybe that's what it's supposed to be. Maybe they're supposed to be the villains, guys. Yeah, probably not. The thing is, I don't think people, for the most part, take conspiracy theorists that seriously. And if you do, you should probably, you know, stop. It's called a theory for a reason. <laughs> and I don't even think um, anyone would believe him if he did say man that shooting that shooting was fake man they're all actors man but apparently they saw it as like a threat <laughs> that he was saying this and saw to blowing up his house over reaction all right and that's that's literally it there's a lot of smash cuts and because of that i felt like the pacing was pretty bad for the for the 11 pages that I was allowed to see in this issue. There's so many pages dedicated to just selling the rest of their books. I mean, it's a little bit irritating. I wish that they just were giving out the first issue. That's usually what Free Comic Book Day, you know, does. They'll let you see most of the first issue, at least like a more complete story and that's how they get you on the series and the whole idea is that you print it super cheaply for free comic book day so even if they have the first issue chances are it's gonna rip up or get ruined somehow and they're gonna have to buy the first issue anyway but uh this does feel like uh they they printed it the more pricey way it doesn't feel like it, it would rip easily if i tried to which i won't but it is going in the trash. I think the story itself is an interesting idea, but um, they just weren't able to keep my attention that well. And I could do without the political parodies. That's just... Last thing I want to think about right now is politics. And to be fair, you know, Mark Wade is a part of this, so... Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of Ignition down below in the comments <laughs> and of course as usual remember to like the video to help support the channel i'll see you guys next time
bye.